Hey everybody, it's Neon Polygons and doing a follow-up video from almost a year ago. Um, this is my white IS300 from 2002, fully stock, nothing, no modifications made, it, made to it whatsoever, completely all OEM parts. Um, now a year ago I made a video after I kind of recently did an inspection and you know just want to kind of show it off just because well long story short it's it's stock and look at its condition it's practically mint <laughs> is the best way for me to put it it's practically mint uh, as you see here this is still the original paint job I'll show the interior I'll show you the engine I'll show the odometer on this um, but yeah, this is now 20 years old, and when I last posted this video, I got a number of recommendations from people uh, in the IS300 uh, community who essentially kind of gave me some tips of what I should essentially uh, should do. I'll be honest with you, I, I'm not a car enthusiast. I don't really know much about cars. Um, so I, I took a lot of your feedback on things that I should do uh, specifically for safety precautions. Um, now, when I show, last showed this video, or showed off the IS300. It was around 19,000 miles on my odometer. It's now almost close to 20,000 miles, so basically about 1,000 miles uh, within a year that I drove, um, if, if even that. Um, now there was a number of things that people recommended in the comments in regards to what I should do to the engine because of the age, uh, just really to, you know, ensure that I could have this car running smoothly for the next 20 years. Um, now this car specifically, again, um, is a little bit of an anomaly. It's 20 years old, but less than around 20,000 miles on its odometer. So a number of the recommendations that were made to me were usually things that you would do to a car um, if you were driving it at a pretty consistent basis over 10 years. So I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. There's a, a number of things that I had done, but you know, here's a little bit of an update video to show you the work that was put in. Okay, so here is the engine of the car. It's still the original 2JZ. Uh, didn't do anything to soup it up. It literally is a stock engine. Um, but I took a lot of the recommendations that you guys suggested because of my car's age. Uh, now, again, the mechanics, uh, when I asked them to do this, they were uh, quite baffled because, again, this was not an unusual situation where they have a car that's over 20 years old, has under 20,000 miles, and yet has an engine that, you know, doesn't really look it or feel it in a sense. It doesn't, like, show its age. Uh, in fact, a lot of them were kind of we're not sure if you should do this because once we start opening this thing up stuff might be actually in pretty good condition so some of the quick things that that they did is obviously uh they lifted it up they changed the radiator uh they said there's a little bit of um you know just signs of age they changed the water pumps the cam seals the crank seals the drive belt the timing belt uh, even changed the spark plugs and the spark plug wires because in the 20 years I've had this car, I've never changed it. So there was no history of changing the spark, uh, spark plugs whatsoever. Uh, now when they did remove the timing belt, I asked them what essentially was the condition, it, condition of it. Cause I was just curious. Cause you know, the recommendation that all of you said was, uh, you should change the timing belt every 60,000 miles or every, um, how do I say this? Every every 10 years and once they opened it up i asked them what was the condition of it and they said it was fairly good so i'm not sure you know if i should have just kept the timing belt like the original as it is but you know again i didn't want to kind of take any chances because again you know over age you know who knows if, if, if it was ready already brittle and could have been ready to go but according to the mechanics they said it was in fairly good condition uh, all that considered being that it's a 20 year old car and only having driven it uh, under 20,000 miles. Um, they did recommend obviously uh, changing or replacing or you know cleaning out the air sensor. I didn't want to change the air sensor just because they you know it was quite expensive. So I just decided instead just to have it um, taken out and cleaned. Uh, really other than that, the other things that were just really kind of done to the you know, my car was they did change a lot of the fluids. So they did change um, the 
brake fluid to rear differential fluids. Um, that was really it. You know, obviously I had a normal oil change. That's, you know, you I do every year with a synthetic oil. Um, but really nothing much. Now, the one thing I probably would change is my battery. Um, I didn't have the dealership do that uh, just because, um, you know, it would have been more expensive. Now, the reason I, I probably would have wanted to change it is because I, I did notice there is some like odd residue on it. And I'm not quite sure exactly like where that's coming from. If it's coming from like the battery itself or, you know, the engine. So it's a little bit weird. So if any of you guys know why, why I might be seeing a little bit of this residue on the battery, uh, please do let me know. Um, but other than that, um, the engine was <laughs> fairly good condition. This is exactly, you know, for all of you IS300 enthusiasts out there, uh, I love to know your feedback by kind of just like looking at a eyeball glance of what you're seeing right now. Obviously, I'm, you know, not opening open it up so you guys can see the inside of the, the water pumps and the, the drive belt. Uh, but once they opened it up, they said, hey, guy, uh, you know, this thing is some pretty you know stellar condition so you know let me show you back inside the interior of the car uh after i you know close off the roof but just some you know quick little side things on the front of my car um these are the original stock headlights um as you can see it's still clear uh you know most gain maybe gain a little bit foggy over here but for the most part um they're in tip top tip top condition um i do know with a lot of uh people who have these I guess you can kind of say Alteza headlights or so to speak, uh, they tend to fog up. Mines are still the original 2002 casings or, you know, shields per se. Uh, no problems, never had to replace the headlights yet. So uh, just wondering, you know, at what point will that actually happen? But so far, so good. Um, and yeah, this is my IS 300 as it is right now and you know before I kind of leave uh, or focus on the interior I kind of just want to show a little bit of like the front of the hood of my car it's still the original paint job so I don't know if you can kind of tell but it still has that pearl sparkly white it's never really uh, unglistened and I'm not sure what the word that you can use to describe it however it is it has started to chip away unfortunately so I'm not quite sure how to handle this because it, it would be an expensive job just to repaint this entire thing uh, but nonetheless from a exterior standpoint as you can see uh, the car is in fantastic condition like fantastic condition like no dents no scrapes whatsoever now there is one thing I gotta do I gotta remove this 3m thing over here now unfortunately the dealer said once this gets removed it actually might chip away the paint um, and it started to yellow unfortunately so uh once i decide to kind of replace that what i probably will have to do is repaint or blend in kind of the portions where the 3m protective adhesive is and i really just put that just to protect uh by my bumpers really uh just from like scratches and you know i did that like literally 20 years ago so I will have to remove it and blend it. Uh, you know, once I do re remove it, I probably have to figure out how do I remove any remaining residue to dry it off. And then it, obviously after that, I have to re-blend the paint and hopefully it can match up with this, you know, with the same pearl -ish. You know, here's a good view of it where you can kind of see the, the sparkle of the paint. Um, re-blend the paint job to exactly match exactly as I have it now. Um, but yeah, it has not yellow, no color fading whatsoever on my car. So let's take a look on the inside. All right, so here's the interior of my car. Uh, still fairly clean, still the same leather seats. Here, I'll go into a wide view. Um, as you can see, it's in amazing stellar condition. Uh, and it's very clean. I, you know, again, this is exactly stock as I had it uh, 20 years ago. And in some ways, uh, depending on, you know, kind of like the, how much, uh, you know, I keep it indoors, it actually still has a little bit of this new car smell to it. So it's a little bit, you know, odd when people come in, they're like, wait, did you just buy this? And it's, the answer is no, it, it just somehow, I just kept it in really good condition from, you know, 
smelling or losing that scent. Now, as you see here, uh, I did have a wood, uh, a wood trim that was installed. That probably is the only aftermarket thing I, I probably did to the car, but I had that when I purchased the car. So as part of when I got from the dealership, uh, one of the things that they put onto it was a wood trim. At first, you know, over as time went on, I kind of didn't like like that decision. But now knowing that, you know, sometimes the dashboards uh, tend to kind of, uh, in a way, rot. I'm actually glad that I did put the wood trim because it does kind of, you know, make it, you know, still, or how do I best say this? It still prevents its age from showing, uh, mainly to the, you know, deterioration of the dashboard. It kind of hides those flaws, uh, thankfully. But as you can see here, the leather seats are still uh, in fairly good condition. Um, it is an automatic, so I know a lot of UIS 300s are probably like all bummed out by that because it isn't a manual. Um, I'm not like some crazy driver. I, I this is like my daily, right? So, for me, this this car having an automatic is is perfectly fine. Now, I am well aware of like the engine is what people love, but for me, the interior of this car is still fantastic. In fact, um, I even still have these brochures that came with the car. Uh, you know, that's and they they feel like literally like brand new. Um, so that just tells you essentially the condition of you know, the, how this car is kept. And, you know, for those of you who are trying to buy an IS300 out there, it is definitely possible to find one that is in good or is even better condition than the one I have. I've seen some videos out there of some people who have taken amazing uh, care of their IS300s uh, that are even older than the 2002, they have in the 2001 model. So you can definitely find a really good condition IS300. Uh, you don't, you know, believe me, the people who are selling these are not all just modders and, and people who, um, uh, you know, kind of, you know, really drift uh, on this car. There are definitely a lot of people who just used it as their normal, you know, daily. Uh, the only difference, obviously, is that a lot of people probably at this point who are selling it, you know, probably have do have significant mileage on their car. So let's show you a little bit of my odometer and, you know, a little bit more of the IS. All right, so let's get on the inside of the IS. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the engine so you guys can, you know, hear it for yourselves if it sounds like it's in good condition. Turn it on. Turns on smooth. And as you see there, there's my mileage. Just under 2,000 miles. It's um, 19,896 miles on this. So uh, kind of a big milestone for me once I finally hit uh, 20,000. Um, as you see here, as I kind of show a little bit more of the interior, yeah, that, that is a little bit of the rot that I've got going on on the dashboard. Um, the one thing that I is no longer in, in great condition on the car, and unfortunately that's the CD player. I'll show a little bit of a video right now in terms of like what happens when I put in a CD. Um, but essentially it, it just doesn't read anymore and and in o the only way for me to fix it is I literally have to just tear out the CD player uh, that would be unfortunately too expensive so I you know I'm not really going to do that but all in all as you can see here I'll go back into wide view um, is 300 is in fantastic condition here's the, the sunroof right um, and I've had this car for 20 years 20 years of my life and some of the best memories I have are, are, you know, with this car and driving it, you know, with my family and whatnot. So I'm privileged. I, I'm well aware of, um, you know, having this car. Uh, I don't take it for granted. And I don't definitely don't take it for granted for the condition that it's in. Uh, I know a lot of people are asking me if I would sell it. And the short answer is um, I wouldn't just because... You know, it wouldn't make sense for me financially to sell this and then try to buy a new car. Um, it wouldn't be enough, unfortunately, for me to pay for a new car. And I, car works perfectly fine, so why sell, right? Um, and to me, there's a lot of sentimental value in having the IS300. I, I hope actually to have this car uh, well into my life. And 
yeah, pretty much there's nothing uh, more I can say about having an IS300. I do think it's an amazing car. Uh, and for those of you who are looking to buy one, you know, definitely, you know, this is just a little bit of a video to kind of show you of uh, what you can expect when you have an IS300 and, you know, possibly like the condition that you could probably seek if you're looking for like a 2002, 2003 model, which has the two Jay-Z that I know a lot of you want to have. And here is my wheels. Now I got um, all four of my wheels replaced last year. They're, they're still new. You could still see the, uh, whatever these things are. I don't know what you call these little pointy things are. You could still see it on the rubber. Uh, just had my car re-detailed, as you can see here. So it looks fabulous once again. Um, and yeah, you know, it's stock, still has the stock rims on it. You know, I'm glad I never changed them out. I'm glad I just kept it as is because it's, to me, having just the, the nice normal stock Lexus rims, it, it's still classy. These alloys are just, you know, heavy duty and they look fantastic. So here's the spoiler in the back. Uh, you know, just like with the front, uh, my Altezza lights don't have any fog to it whatsoever. It's still stock. Um, Lexus logo still looks good. Spoiler stock. Um, Lexus logo again still looks good. IS300 lettering still looks good. Both Altezza lights look good. I'm really glad I got the spoiler. It really made a big difference when I first originally purchased it, you know. 20 years ago um, but yeah exterior wise still looking still looking fresh man still looking beautiful well everyone uh, this is my is 300 I want to say thank you all again for watching my video uh, for giving me the advice in terms of when I last posted this what I should do uh, I took it <laughs> it was very costly don't get me wrong it was a very costly endeavor um, but I, I'm glad that I you know, took a lot of people's advice so I can ensure the longevity of this car for the next 20 years of my life, whatever. And you know, I hope to keep it running you know, always smoothly. I know a lot of people out there, you know, they have like two, 300,000 miles on this bad boy. Uh, I only got 20, but again, the car is fairly old. So hopefully I can you know, keep it going for you know, another decade, hopefully at least. Uh, but as you see here, this is my IS300 and it still looks just as fabulous as when I first got it. And for those of you who are looking to get one, I definitely recommend that, you know, you find one and hopefully can recondition it to, you know, look the same. And, you know, I'll, I'll probably just say that, you know, this is a car who's bought, uh, I know people are really getting it for the engine. But I do think from a body type, to me, it still stands the test of time. It doesn't look aged, in my opinion, or outdated compared to kind of modern cars right now in the 2020s. Uh, to me, this still feels like it's a car that's, oddly enough, feels like it's from 2020. So um, compared to new Lexuses, I don't know. I, yes, this is a little bit more boxy, whereas like newer, newer ones are curvy. Uh, but I'm not really into the electric engines. I'm not really into that stuff. I, I like kind of the old school uh, engines that, you know, are easy to work on, modifiable, and more importantly, um, just feels like muscle, right? If I could kind of like think of the IS300, you know, again, I'm not a car pro or enthusiast, but to me, this is like a way a as close as you can get to a modern Japanese muscle car, right? <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of contradictions in one sentence. Um, but other than that, I want to say thank you all again for watching. This is Neon Polygons. And let me know any feedback on the IS300, what you saw that I have done. And let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Catch you all soon.